mm-hmm. markets for those things. Uh, did you see that recent, uh, I think it was in Kenya. I think you just saw it maybe yesterday, the day before. But uh, the villagers out there killed killed a, a lion, an old lion, and it made the news. But not so much in the way that some of the others have, because this lion uh, was eating some of their livestock. Mm. And they're like, oh, guess what? This is killing our livestock. That's how we survive. Yeah. So we're going to kill it. So they did. Um, and, of course, you know, you know when ask more questions about well well why and why is uh why is there not hunting here and if there was hunting would that animal have had value and then would there be incentive to keep those populations uh at a, at a certain level and apply the science to it and make sure but there's none of that they just kill it and that's how it goes because these things are killing your livestock that you feed your family with uh so it wasn't long for this earth that happens with elephants with crops yeah oh they destroy the cr- a bunch of crops over yeah, there so what they do they kill them no idea what a farm is <laughs> no, they're not worried they're not it's worried just free they just food. go through yeah. i've seen those those videos those pictures and but uh, it's that's that's the problem about not putting the requisite time energy and effort into studying an issue no matter yeah. what that issue is and just making a snap decision based on something that someone with a lot of followers puts out there all of a sudden that is your uh that's your position as well rather than hmm, let me just do some study here let me think about this a little more and yeah now i'll make my what it's sort of like a woman attacking women for wearing bikinis. It's like, mm. like okay, let's talk about this. Okay, <laughs> you're ruining so, it for there's everyone. Something wrong with that. And also, <laughs> the, there's the thing about wildlife conservation that's very uncomfortable. And what's uncomfortable is that it, it really bothers us that the only way animals really have value in terms of these uh, wild populations of antelope and gazelles and all these different things they hunt in Africa, the way they've made them thrive is by putting value on them to hunt them. And that bothers people a lot. It does. And I get it. Yeah. I I get why it would. I mean, it would be nice if all these people that were animal conservationists spent as much money as hunters. Yeah, but it doesn't happen that way. But they don't. Nope. They They just don't. Especially in America with the Pittman-Robertson Act where a, a percentage of all ammunition sales, of all gear, yeah. all hunting gear, and it turns into all that goes towards wildlife conservation. And it's, it's the tune of billions of dollars. Yeah, and sportsmen uh, voted that in. Yes. Voted that in. That was a, a tax, self-imposed tax. Yes, mm-hmm. and a beautiful one, really. Yeah. It's one of the uh, wildlife conservation in this country and the preservation of public land for recreational use and hunting and fishing and camping is one of the greatest things this country has ever pioneered. Oh, yeah. Because it really doesn't exist or hadn't exist until we did it in this oh, country. Yeah. Out of necessity, because all those bucks added up to a lot of dead deer mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of population <laughs> decline. Yes. And so, But now now we have thriving populations of these, of these animals and turkeys also. Uh, same thing. And now they're all over the place. We have about 200, essentially, that go between a ridge by our house. They come through every day up to this other ridge and then work their way back. And I was heading up to see Steve Ronella in Montana a lot, two weeks ago, and I took a video. He'd been out turkey hunting, didn't see anything. And I took about 200 uh, turkeys just standing there like in the road as I'm leaving in the house and uh yeah right there yeah but you're in park Town city he's always blasting shotguns no. in park city <laughs> no no they're, they're town turkeys they're very safe they're very comfortable hanging out in the backyard but i thought they were going to die this winter because there was uh last winter they were here the whole time because we had a very mild winter last year this year it was not mild it was like the largest recorded snowfall in utah history or park city history anyway and so I, they, they disappeared and i thought oh they're gone because it's the first time they've seen this kind right. of snow as well but uh they came back about three weeks ago they came back in force 200 of them right back like they never left but uh Does they, do they migrate i think they found a barn somewhere with some heat and some oh. feed i'm thinking I don't know. I don't know, but it has to be because they. I don't know if they can just hunker down for all those months that we got all that snow. They I don't, don't know. fly very far. No, but they fly. But yeah. it's pretty cool to see them fly for the for the first yeah. time when you're not uh, when you think that uh, maybe they don't, and then you see them go up to roost and mm-hmm. or come down, and that's that's pretty cool. And that's pretty cool. But yeah, I've um, uh, how far can they fly? I don't know. Hundred yards question. or something? Maybe I don't know. That's all I've seen them. Flies in and yeah. out of these trees, so not very far. But but who knows? Maybe they maybe they do. What a weird.